You got victory in Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. It's no secret, though, folks. He loves us. He loves us. He takes care of us. He's there for us through every situation of life. This song that they're going to sing, sometimes, you know, we sing the big shouting and, you know, waving the flag songs. And then there's other songs that it's not always about jumping and shouting, but this song says, How? I love you, Lord. Think about that. Think about that personally while they sing these words. Dearest friend 
joy my heart now knows how can I begin to measure love that ever grows how can I then explain what happens when I speak your name Lord how please tell me
I want to tell you today, God's still on the throne. And I want to tell you why someday you're going to stand before God. I want to tell you today that every one of us are headed for the judgment seat of God. The Christian to the beam of seat judgment of rewards. I don't know that I'll have many rewards over there, but I sure do hope I have a few. If I just hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, that'd be good enough for me. Just to be in the presence of Jesus. I want to tell you, my dear friend, Jesus is the only way to eternal salvation. The Muslims have their God. The Buddhists have their God. The Shintoism has their God. There are many religions in this world today, but I go on record as saying there is only one God. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one today. I declare to you today, there's no other way to get to heaven. I declare to you today that there's only one way that you're going to spend eternity in the presence of holy God. The alternative is the lake of fire. You must be born again. Oh, listen, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit here. The presence of God has been moving in the sanctuary for the last few weeks. Oh, so... For the last few weeks, we've heard tremendous messages from the pulpit. Brother Alton, last Sunday morning. It goes on and on and on. And God is showing us, His humble servants, His holy kind of glory. I bask in His love today. I thank God for the day that I came to know Him in a personal relationship. And I want to tell you, my walk has been different ever since. I was a good little old Christian boy. But right now, praise God, when I about almost 20 years of age, I became a child of God. <laughs> and that little Christianity wouldn't work. Living good, living right, as far as moral standards are concerned. But I will tell you, unless you have a birthing in here, that only comes by and through the Holy Spirit. You're not going to see heaven. Totally impossible. We look at this. Hey, by the way, we all have that appointment. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die. doesn't stop there. It says, but after this, the judgment. Let me call you to question today. Are you sure, do you know for sure that you are a child of God? Do you know today for sure that if you were to exit this life that you'd be in the presence of holy God? If you don't have that assurance today, my friend, I beg, I beg you, don't wait too late. Time's running out. I call to a question today. What will your answer be? But most of all, what is his answer going to be? You see, you might stand before God, and you will stand before God. You see, every person that has ever been born in the, family, the human family will stand before holy God. But if your sins are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you'll hear him say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity that is sin, I never knew you. Religion will carry you to hell. The blood of Jesus Christ will carry you to heaven. That's the only way to go today. Oh, listen, as we look at this, that's a divine appointment. It's a definite appointment. And I'll tell you what, you won't break it. I only know of two people that broke it. 
There was Enoch, and there was Elijah. And they have an appointment to come back again. In the book of Revelation, that's a message from another day, for another day. But I want to tell you, my dear friend, when you close your eyes on this side, you're going to open your eyes on the other side. Many of us have precious loved ones. They've already gone on over. They're waiting on us. I can just see some of them. I, you know, this is my own, this is painology. I believe they'll be standing there by the gate. <laughs> We start when we go through. That's why we sang that song, Glad Reunion Day. To be reunited with our loved ones, our friends, our family. But most of all, to be reunited with Jesus Christ personally. You see, He lives here through the Holy Spirit. But just to see the nail prints, glory to God. He was asked, where did you receive these? He said, I received them in the house of my friends. You know, he called sinners friends. I want to tell you today, if you don't know Jesus, he loves you. Greater love hath no man than this. Oh, I want to tell you today, it's a good day to be a Christian. Oh, there's going to be an accounting. We see in the second Corinthians chapter four, verse ten, the latter middle part of that, that every, everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he's done, whether it be good or bad. Now, Christian, let me just talk to you a minute. It says everyone. So that means that we're going to be held accountable at the big seat. We're going to be held accountable for our deeds done in this body. I know I've been a failure through the years. I'm not one to be put on a pedestal. But I want to stand in His presence with a clear conscience that I've done the best I could, as feeble as it may be. You're going to give an account today. All those times, you see, when you just thought, well, church's not important today. We're going to, we're going to go have fun. And God's passing blessings out of the church house. Brother, I'm telling you, son, we couldn't get better blessings than this today. The football fields don't have, they can't throw a pass far, far enough to, to, to measure up just for one blessing today. Of the world of entertainments, I'm not going to enumerate, you know, you know. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added to you. Quit seeking the things of the world. They're called beggarly elements. Oh, listen. I've got, time's too short. And I want to, I may, I, I'm not going to rust out for Jesus, I, but I just want to burn out for Jesus. I want to give Him everything I've got. I'm telling you one thing. I know I'm the least of the least. And he's the, but He's the best of the best. And as long as I can just speak a word of encouragement, quote a little scripture, challenge you in your Christian walk. That's what I want to do today. You see, time's running out, folks. I'm not going to get on Bible prophecy. I don't have to tell you. You've already had so much of it now. What we need to do is start believing it. But as we look at this, that appointment, oh, listen, there's an accounting. There's an accounting of our service. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 10 and 11, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I've laid foundation in another build to own it, but let every man take heed how he build thereupon. God requires us to be a faithful servant. You say, well, my brother, man, I can't teach a Sunday school class. If God didn't gift you, gift you with that gift, you don't have to do it. 
I could never stand in the pulpit and shout a message of salvation. If God's not called you, He don't require it. But I don't tell you, He says a little much when God's in it. Did you know that just sweeping the floor? Hey, listen, we come in here to a nice, clean, comfortable building. Somebody that took time to have the air conditioning on on the hot days or the, or the heat on in the cold days. Uh, somebody that had to take good time to cut the grass or clean around and make it, the house of God look nice and neat. That's rewards that you're going to receive. Those people on Wednesday night that do all that wonderful cooking, hallelujah, they're going to be rewarded. <laughs> oh, listen. What can you do for Jesus? Look and see what your talent is. Well, Brother Melvin, I don't have much talent. I'll tell you the best talent you have is sitting in the pew. I got one wave. Boy, that, that, that took the shout out of the, out of the service. But uh, you say, well, Brother Melvin, that's all y'all harp on is being here, being here, and being here. Well, I think the Bible says, fail not to assemble thyself together on the first day of the week as the man of son is. Is that right? That's not my, that's not me talking. That's God's word. We're supposed to be here. Well, now, Brother Melvin, I do, you know, I got things I got to do. What God, <laughs> oh, Lord, what the rapture took place was the way you, some places you at? Wouldn't you be embarrassed? Brother Melvin, we were shouting, now you've done taking the shout out. Not if you're saved. Not if you're living right. You know the old saying is hit dog hollers. Oh, I want to tell you today, it's a good day to be a Christian. I'm going to hurry. I've got about two uh, I've got about uh, another hour and forty five minutes to go. But you see, not only this, I'm cutting it. I'm really cutting it. I took two days to prepare this outline. And I'm taking ten minutes to cut it up. Let's look at the answering, and this is very important. This is a serious thing. To you, I've talked to you who are saved. Now I want to talk to you who are not saved. You know that you are not a child of God. I want to talk to you today. Did you know that you will stand before the Lord as well as the believer? You will not be at the Bema Seat Judgment of Rewards, but you will be at the Great White Throne Judgment. And if you stand at that judgment, the only conclusion that the judge, the high judge God himself will say is depart from me. You workers of iniquity, you lived in sin. You did not receive Jesus. You did not come by the way of the cross. You tried to come by some other method. Therefore, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. By the way, that's when the unbeliever is cast for all time and in eternity into the literal burning lake of fire. Listen very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. If you're not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ, He is the only way to salvation. This world has concocted many plans, but there's been only one blood-bought route, and that's Jesus Christ's blood. It is the only cleansing blood, the cleansed blood, undefiled blood that can cover your sinfulness. And I tell you, unless you come by the way of the cross, you're going to hear these sad words, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, that you sinners, I never knew you. You never came by the way of the cross. You never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's when you will be cast literally for all time and eternity. Actually, there will be no time and eternity. It will be ever, it will be eon of eons, never ending. Can you fathom that? Never ending. 
when the sun came up this morning, it's going to set again this evening. That's a day. We have so many days in a year. We have so many years in whatever the cycle, so forth and so on. But that will not be in eternity. It will never cease to be. You will be forever in the lake of fire, burning and falling and screaming and hollering and weeping and wailing. Sad. Why? Why would a person in his right mind, after hearing, hey, listen, I did not write this book. I did not write this book. This book was verbally inspired by the Holy Spirit. It was not concocted by some man's imagination. It was the Holy Divine from heaven. You read it, you will find the way to salvation. You read it, you will find the way to life each day you live. You read it and you'll find where your home's going to be after this life. You read the Psalms and you find encouragement to, for the trip. You read it all the way through and you find God has a message for us. The world's religion might have codes or creeds or whatever. But this is a living book. This is the only way to salvation through this word. Plus nothing I appreciate the Holy Spirit showing up today. I appreciate God moving among the people. I'm convinced. I am convinced that there are some here today and you may have your name on a Baptist church roll somewhere. It could even be West Side Baptist Church. And you might not really be saved. You might have even been through that baptismal pool up there. I might have been the one that baptized you. Brother Alton might have been the one that baptized you. But unless you have been baptized under the blood of Jesus Christ, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, trust in Him, not church membership, not some creed, not some man. By the way, there are many religions in this world today that are based on a man. That man is dead and in hell today. And causing droves by the droves by the droves of people to follow them into the pits of hell. Because it is a false religion. I've delivered my heart. I call you into question today. I challenge you today. How do you stand with God? Did you know that you're not here by surprise today? God knew that you were going to be in this presence, in this service. Did you know, holy God, knew you was going to be here today? You're not here by happen chance or because somebody made you come, invited you to come, and you came because of them. God divinely appointed that you be here in this house of worship today to hear this man of God. Hear these great testimonies of the wonderful singing the praise of God. Toward God. Now, we've done our part. The rest rests on your shoulders. What will you do with Jesus today? Every head bowed, every eye closed.
as they prepare a song of invitation, begin to play softly on the instrument. I don't want anybody to look around. I want you to have your head bowed, your eyes closed. I'm going to ask some questions. First of all, I'm going to ask you, do you know for a fact you're saved?